Lost on a Deserted Island Author, Agam Mora Cross-Dress Small World, Part 4, A Boyfriend in Need is a Boyfriend Indeed Lyro told me, her voice a little depressed, I will try to recover and take care of myself. Although I didn't expect my feelings to be reciprocated, Lyra's attitude made me a little sad. I nodded speechlessly. I approached my suitcase looking for some clothes and some of my belongings. I love how it feels to wear a girl's clothes, but Lyra is already here and I should give her things back. Besides, I'm not shameless enough to dare to wear women's clothes in front of others. But what surprised me was that my suitcase was empty. Lyra looked at me with apologetic eyes, I'm so sorry. When I was at sea, I removed all the belongings inside that suitcase to lighten it, and then used it as a life buoy. I replied, ah, it's okay. Just as long as your things are intact. When I said this, Lyra seemed to have discovered something. She looked back at her whole body and was startled to ask, Did you change my outfit? Have you seen all my body? I replied, Well, I have no choice either. You can hate me, but I can't let you get sick. Just for a moment, as if thinking clearly, she breathed softly and said, Never mind. We are husband and wife in name after all. Not to mention, we don't even know if we're ever going back to the mainland. Saying this, Lyra has a melancholy face. I'm sure she's not the kind of person who's afraid of death or suffering. She must be worried about her family. Without her, it was like her family had to work a little more. Our life goes on like that. I fish every day or go to the forest to catch some small animals. After a few days of recovery, Lyra also went into the forest to pick mushrooms and some wild berries. My movements are much more mature than the early days. Indeed, the dangers that change people are so great. In this desolate place, I can't be a worthless man. The way I think about it has changed a lot, I've thought through a lot of problems that I would never have thought of if I was at home. There was another big change which was Lyra's attitude. After days of living together, Lyra had a more sympathetic view of me. But, it seems she still doesn't really trust me. Not too far apart, but we were in two different tents. One evening, in front of a flickering campfire, Lyra said to me, Perhaps I misjudged you before. I thought you were just a worthless young man, but these days, I'm surprised by your immensely mature life skills. I also have great respect for the vast amount of knowledge from you. I shook my head and said, No. It is true that in the past, I read a lot of books. But the knowledge from the book was simply a bunch of theory, I completely lacked practice skills. I've just been trying to change things recently. Lyra continued, To tell you the truth, I used to hate you a bit. Maybe I'm a little jealous of your situation. But I feel different now. If you weren't with me, I wouldn't be alive until now. So what makes you want to change? I turn to her and ask, Do you really want to hear it? Lyra nodded, Um. I know someone who is very difficult to change. I sighed and said, The difficult circumstances forced me to change. But that is not the most important thing. I think it's the hope of survival that makes me want to change. And my hope of survival comes from you. The moment you risked your life to save me, I really loved you. As soon as I know I'm alive, I want to live as long as I can just to see you someday. I'm so satisfied now. Lyra was surprised after hearing my confession. She said, didn't expect it to turn out that way. I'm sorry. I know you love me, but at the moment, I still haven't determined my feelings for you. I need more time to think of it. I shook my head, smiled and replied, no need. I'm not asking you to love me. The past few days of living with you, I have been very happy. Sometimes I imagine, we are living like a real couple. The next day, we did the same things as usual. 
I was preparing to start a fire to make lunch when I heard Lara's scream from the forest. I rushed to the place where the scream came from and saw Lara sitting on the ground with a scared face. In front of her was a little snake. Without thinking I picked up a stone and threw it at it. The snake panicked and left, and I rushed to hold Lara and ran back to the tent. Seeing her pale face, I believe this snake is poisonous. I said to Lyra, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna let you die. Going to the tent, I put Lyra down, examined it carefully and found a small bite on the back of Lyra's hand. It seems that while picking the fruit, Lyra was bitten by the snake. I didn't hesitate to use my mouth to suck the poison out. After a frenzied moment of sucking poison, Lyra's face was much better. But I know the danger is not over yet. I need to find a way to completely detox, or she'll still be in danger. I used to read in a book, God never closes a door without opening a window, in the surroundings where venomous snakes live there will be an antidote. I'm not sure if this is true, but even if there's a slight chance I'll give it a try. Of course, this is extremely dangerous because finding an antidote means I have to once again enter the territory of that venomous snake. But I'm not afraid. What if I die, as long as Lyra is still alive, it's enough. After carefully arranging Lyra in the tent, I started running into the forest to find it. Remembering the situation before, it seems like I've seen this kind of snake in a book before. Although I'm not too interested in the contents of that book, but at least that antidote herb of that snake I still remember a little bit of its shape. I've rummaged through the forest for a long time, but I still haven't found that herb. My body is now covered in dirt and ashes like a beggar. The men's clothes on me were rotting for a long time. When I was desperate, I suddenly saw herbs just like in that book. This made me extremely happy. But my happiness didn't last long, because Nerobs was a venomous snake scave, the same species as the one that bit Lyra. In order to pick that herb, I was forced to be bitten by them, and certainly not just one. I don't care about death, but in the face of a bunch of venomous snakes, to say that I'm not afraid at all would be a lie. Thinking of Lyra being in danger, I put my fear aside and risked myself to gather the herb. Of course, I was bitten by the snakes for most of my arm. But I'm still glad the herb was picked by me. I rushed back, despite everything. Fortunately, the snakes didn't intend to come after me. Because my endurance is higher than Lyra's, plus I don't have the same fear as Lyra before, so even though I was bitten a lot, I still had the strength to return to the tent. Lyra is still in a semi conscious condition. But my situation right now is not good at all. I began to feel dizzy, lightheaded, and there was a burning pain in my chest. However, I still tried to cook some medicine from the herb I had just picked. I brought a bowl of medicine to Lyra's mouth and helped her drink it. When I saw that her face had returned to normal, I breathed a sigh of relief and then collapsed, unconscious next to Lyra. I don't know how much time has passed, I woke up from a dream. Sitting next to me right now is Lyra with a worried face. When she saw me wake up, Lyra had a tear in her eyes. She hurriedly said, you're awake. You worry me so much. I smiled at Lyra, am I alive? Are you alright? Lyra burst into tears and hugged me, fool. Why would you save me despite your life? My life is not worth your life. You're dead, I can't live. Fortunately, the medicine you cooked is still there, so you're still alive. I raised my hand to wipe away the tears on Lyra's eyelids, for you, my life may be more important, but for me, nothing is more important than you. As soon as I finished my sentence, I felt a rush of heat in my mouth. I realized, Lyra is kissing me. I was very surprised by this. The kiss lasted for a while, then Lyra let go of me. I stammered in surprise, you. This. Lyra gave an affectionate look towards me. 
She whispered, I love you. Although when you brought me back, I was in a state of semi-consciousness, I couldn't sit up, but I still knew everything around me. I know you saved me. I know you risked your life to rush into the forest to find an antidote. And when I helped you take your medicine, I saw countless bite marks on your hand. Even now, if I still can't determine my feelings, I'm such a fool. I smiled, I'm so happy. Lyra once again gave me a kiss, this time the kiss was much deeper. That night, we together carved a line of words on the tree, Miles, Lyra, until death do us part. To be continued. Today's story would like to stop here. Thank you for watching. Please like and share for people with similar interests to motivate me to develop my channel. Goodbye and see you in another story.